Welcome to Pimp Your Brain. Here with me is Fritz Kragler. He will uh, explain us uh, fluorescence microscopy. But first of all, um, he has uh, some pictures uh, to show what it is my fluorescence microscopy. Okay, what you see here is a normal gray scale image. Uh, this is what you have in the normal light microscope. Exactly. Uh, it, this is what we see in the normal light microscopy when you look through it without any fluorescent source. Uh, and then the next picture, we switched on the fluorescent light, and what you see are these red signals within the cell, uh, within the tissues. Uh, which indicate that there is a fluorescent substance present in the, in the tissue. So what you have is that you, with fluorescence microscopy you will see more structures than, than you would see with a normal microscope. Exactly. We, we can uh, resolve uh, uh, components which normally are not visible to our eye. Okay, so and how does it function, the fluorescence microscope? Uh, it's actually a rather simple principle. Every one of you knows of a spectrum of a light. So we have a long wavelengths and short wavelengths, and the short wavelengths are the UV light, for example. So this is the blue here. And this is the blue here. Mm -hmm. And then you have a long wavelength, which is the red light, and in between green and yellow. Uh, and you can introduce a substance or identify substances when they are excited by UV light, uh, they emit a green light. Okay, so this is the special thing. With normal dyes you have uh, only, uh, it's uh, otherwise, but with fluorescence dyes uh, it changes the color, right? Ex the light changes the color. Uh, exactly. So what's happening is the energy is taken up by the fluorescent molecule and is emitted in a longer wavelength uh, normally. Uh, and we have different substances. For example, some substances can be excited by green light and uh, are emitting red light, or they are excited by the uh, UV light and emit at the red light. Okay. And this is something we can use in microscopy. Mm -hmm. And um, this is what you use to see proteins, right? Yep. Uh, we can, um, proteins, what you see here, this is a complex structure. Uh, with different domains on the this protein. This is the protein. This is a protein. Okay. This gray uh, here is the protein. And they are also fluorescent? Normally not. In the, in the cell, normally proteins are not fluorescent and they are not visible under fluorescent light. So what we are doing is uh, we can tag them with a fluorescent tag. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, this tag allows us then to uh, uh, follow the protein within the cell or within the tissue. So you have linked the fluorescent dye with the protein so that you can see the protein um, uh, via fluorescent light. Exactly. Okay. And, uh, and, this is what, and, and this is what you are using for your fluorescence microscopy, but you are using a special type of fluorescence microscopy. Yes, uh, we, we have a, a very special uh, laser scanning confocal microscope. Uh, this sounds really expensive. Oh, it is. <laughs> it is. Uh, it's about uh, between 500,000 to 700,000 euro. Wow. It's a high tech uh, uh, microscope uh, which uses lasers uh, emitting it. This is the blue. Uh, this thing. is the blue, but we indicated here is blue. Uh, this laser is emitting light in a certain wavelength. And when it hits a protein which is stacked with a fluorescent dye, this uh, will be emitting uh, uh, in the red wavelength, as mm -hmm. indicated here, for example. And a complex lens system and a detector system allows us when to pinpoint the location of a dye within the cell or within the tissue. And uh, this is indicated here. So you can do it in three dimensions. You can go deeper in the tissue or up in the tissue into the epidermis, mm -hmm. or you can see within the cell where it's localized. Oh. Uh, and when you get this uh, grayscale image, which is then colored according to the wavelengths you're detecting. Beautiful. But uh, you've brought us uh, three pictures uh, of your research, right? Yes. Uh, here's an example of uh, a protein we are working on. Uh, and uh, you see a green signal uh, within the cells and this protein we identified some time ago uh, is responsible for viral defense of the plant cells. Okay, so uh, this is fighting against the viruses from the plant and uh, um, you have uh, linked this protein with a green fluorescent dye, right? Exactly, and uh, what you see here is the localization within the cell. So this is an ed epidermal cell and this fine structures you see here, which are green 
uh, uh, being a screen fluorescent uh, 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 filament is actually the cellular cytoskeleton where this protein is associated. To. So this is what you find out via this picture that uh, this protein is linked to the um, a cytoskeleton. Yeah, this was a surprise for us because at this time uh, we did not know that the uh, cytoskeleton is responsible for virus defense. And uh, the next picture? And so in the next picture you see these fine uh, greenish lines which are decked by another protein uh, which we are working in the lab. Okay, so it's again the protein which you are interested in which is linked to a, a fluorescent dye, again the green yeah, color. Yes, it, it's okay. uh, linked to a green color and we were interested to localize it within the cell and to know if it's actually accumulating at small pores which are allow the communication of signals between cells which are attached to each other. And these are the these fine dots you see done. Okay, so that's how you found out that this protein is also in these pores. Yes, and, and this helped us to understand how this protein works and that it's actually associated to these pores and we use this now to interfere with the cell communication between cells. Okay. And the last picture? Uh, the last picture shows uh, a very young leaf emerging uh, on a, uh, between the cotyledons uh -huh. of, uh, uh, in a young seedling. So this is the, the, young, um, the yeah. young leaf? This okay. is the young leaf and you see here a red signal. Uh -huh. uh, it's a stress signal uh, and uh, it's called anthocyanin uh, and it's produced by, uh, up on stress uh, responses by the uh, plants. So this, uh, this leaf has stress right now? No, it doesn't actually. Uh, this young leaf behaves like a baby which is crying because it's growing and getting new teeth. Okay. Uh, thank you, Fritz, for this explanation what is fluorescence microscopy and also for these beautiful pictures. And thank you for watching us.